Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are 10 clever uses for Apple intelligence that you probably haven't seen anywhere else. So at this point, plenty of people, including myself, have shown you how to do the basics with Apple intelligence. Things like proofread your text, compose new text, create images and image playground, and even clean up your photos. But there are a lot more uses for Apple intelligence, and a lot of these involve Siri. So for instance, did you know that you can use Siri plus ChatGPT to summarize documents? These could be documents that you're working on in pages, or it could be a PDF document you have open in preview. For instance, here I've got a PDF document, and it's just open in the preview app, and I'm going to use Siri and ask about this document. Now, when I do that, it will ask me if it's okay to share this document with ChatGPT. So let's get a general summary here. And when I press return, it's going to ask, Do you want me to send this content from preview to ChatGPT? And notice I have to choose screenshot or full content. Screenshot's only going to send what's visible on the screen. So in a case like this, you want to choose full content. It'll tell you the size here in case you're worried about upload size. And then you can send. And it's going to send it to ChatGPT and you'll get a result. Now that's great, but what's more useful is to actually ask questions about what is here. So for instance, if you're looking for temperature information about the studio display, then you can just ask that. Do you want me to use ChatGPT to answer that? Yes, the document specifies that the Apple Studio display should be operated within an ambient temperature range of 50 to 95 F. So you can basically ask questions about long text documents, PDF documents, pages documents, numbers documents, all sorts of things. Note that if I go to System Settings and then go to Apple Intelligence and Siri, under ChatGPT, that's where I can sign into my account if I want to use my account instead of just using ChatGPT anonymously. I can also turn off Confirm ChatGPT requests to simplify the entire process. So this works for spreadsheets in numbers as well. It can analyze the spreadsheet without you having to convert it into text or anything. So for instance, I can ask it to summarize this table here. What is this table about? Do you want me to send this content from numbers to ChatGPT? And I get a summary here. But you can also ask questions about the table. In this spreadsheet document, which fruit is the most popular? Do you want me to send this content from numbers to ChatGPT? In the document, the fruit with the highest total sales is orange. By the way, if you find these videos valuable, consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts, and more. You can read about it at macmost.com slash Patreon. You can also ask questions about photos. It could be a photo opened in preview or one in the Photos app. So let's try to get information about this photo. What's the purpose of this line of rocks on the beach? Do you want me to send this photo to ChatGPT? Here's an answer from ChatGPT. Now you may already know that you could summarize an email in the Mail app. So you just scroll down a bit here and you get the Summarize button. But if you look to the left, it says one message. What if you went to a thread of messages? In view here, I've got organized by conversation turned on, and I can see here, I've got several messages in this thread. I could click summarize, and it will summarize the entire thread. So if you need to catch up on a whole bunch of email that's gone back and forth between everybody before a meeting, this is a good way to do it. Now, not every app's gonna have a document that you can send to ChatGPT. So sometimes using a screenshot is the best way to get information. So for instance, here in the Maps app, which really has no Apple intelligence features added, you could still ask ChatGPT about something and send a screenshot and get something back. So I'm gonna use Siri here, and I'm going to ask about this town. Tell me about this town. Do you want me to send the screenshot to ChatGPT? So I'll send it. Here's an answer from ChatGPT. And you can see it figures out that this map is centered on this town here and gives me some information. I could continue to ask ChatGPT more questions if I want. I'm going to try that. Are there any good camping spots near here? Here's an answer from ChatGPT. Now, of course, the app on the Mac that's getting a lot of attention is Image Playground. It allows you to generate images from your photos, from text, and all sorts of things. 
But one of the problems you may have is you get the square image back. You can export this pretty easily. I'll drag and drop this here to the desktop and you can see I get this square image here. But what if I didn't want the background? Remember, you've got the ability to copy subject from an image and remove the background in various ways on your Mac. And you can use it with these images. So for instance, I can two finger click or right click on this image here and choose copy subject. And I'll get just a copy of the subject. If I look at a new image from that, that's what I get. Of course, in preview, you can also do the same thing by going to tools and then remove background. So keep that in mind with all of these things you generate. You could always take them and then remove the background in preview and lots of other apps as well. Now you can use writing tools to proofread your writing, but what if you want to check the facts? You could do that with Siri and ChatGPT, and you could do it for a whole document. So as an example here, I'm not even going to use a pages document. I'm going to use a keynote document where all of the information is on different slides. You could actually use Siri to ask ChatGPT to fact check this for you. Check all the facts in this keynote document to make sure they are correct. Do you want me to send this content from Keynote to ChatGPT? I'll send full content. Here's an answer from ChatGPT. Now, one of the uses for AI is to create sample documents and sample text. And you can do that with Siri and ChatGPT, but it won't put it directly into a numbers table. So you can just work around that by, say, using text edit and then using edit and then under writing tools, compose. And I'm going to ask it here to give me some sample data. And I'm going to ask it to provide it in a CSV, which I can easily import into a spreadsheet. So I get this good data here. This is exactly what I want. I'm going to copy it. And then I can go here into this table and paste it in. So I got some quick sample data I can use on my spreadsheet. You can also use it to check lists, for instance, to see if you forgot anything. So for instance, in this example, I've created a list of items to bring on a road trip. But before I send this email to a friend, I'm going to see if I forgot anything here. I can do that by using the Apple intelligence tools. I can activate them here. And I could say I want to compose. And notice one of the options here is to include all text. So I do want to include all the text here because the question I'm going to ask is this. Now, because I have include all text, it should realize that this is a list of things to bring on a road trip. It should see what I've already got and suggest some more. And then here you can see I can further refine it like this, or I can just click away and then look at this list and incorporate what I want into the list up here. Another thing that comes in handy with AI is finding answers to questions. And you can use this not just to answer your questions, but other people's questions as well. For instance, you get a text from somebody that's this, you can simply go to compose the message, but instead of trying to figure it all out for yourself, you can control click, right click, or two finger click here, use writing tools, and then compose. And I'm just gonna paste in the question from right here and return, and it should come up with an answer. There you go. So now I could send this right to the person. If I think this is a little too verbose, I can maybe select it again. And then let's go into writing tools again here and make it more concise. And there we go. That's a little bit easier to follow. So hopefully what you've learned here is that there are a lot of features of Apple intelligence that people aren't necessarily talking about yet. A lot of them involve using Siri with ChatGPT along with sending your document or a screenshot to get all sorts of information and answers. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.